The Hawaii Electric Light Company has made its choice for the company that will expand geothermal energy on Hawaii Island. Israel-based Ormat Industries Limited, the owner of Puna Geothermal Venture operating in Poiki, has been selected to provide an additional 25 megawatts of geothermal energy. PGV already has an existing contract with Helco to produce 38 megawatts. The selection was the result of a lengthy request for proposals, or RFP, initiated by Helco in early November 2012. The utility was initially interested in an expansion of 50 megawatts, but they planned to tap ORMAT for only half that amount. The news was not welcome among the many Pune residents who took a stand against the RFP about a year and a half ago. We want to not let this happen next year, the year after. You know, we want clean energy in our community, not dirty, toxic chemicals put into our air, put into our water system. In 2012, the Geothermal Working Group, convened by the state legislature, reported that the resource has a significant potential to be the Big Island's primary energy resource. The establishment of a working group to analyze the potential development of geothermal energy as a primary energy source to meet the baseload demands for electricity on this island. Because when the wind does not blow and the sun does not shine, the heat from a volcano continues to produce a steady flow of power. When we first got into geothermal, it was supposed to have some savings to the general public, some savings to the Hawaiian community, but it never did materialize. All the cost of geothermal was predicated on the cost of oil. So there was no savings. It's, it's really cheaper to produce geothermal, but it was predicated on the cost of oil. So that way, your electric bill never did reduce. Other companies interested in developing in Pune began to present their ideas. Let us be very open about the fact that IDG is a business. We're entrepreneurs. We happen to be Hawaiians first. Most notable was the Innovations Development Group, or IDG, touting a proprietary native-to-native -native model, a different way to do geothermal on Hawaii Island. Of our goals. We're Hawaiians first, and our goal is to partner with our community to share in that revenue. They were eyeing a 400-acre parcel of Kealoha estate land in Poiki, not too far from the existing power plant. Discussion on geothermal development became a hot topic, and pressure mounted for Helco to expand its portfolio. Will Ormat and Helco sit down with Senator Solomon on the first 30 megawatts and bring the price down for us? Because we're publicly traded and we have investors, the investors uh, invested in us because of the contract. So that one there, we can talk about it, but we cannot, that's for our corporate management to really give a better answer, really. I'll take that yes. as a no. Uh, <laughs> for the 25 megawatt contract. We did ask, not just PGV, we asked all of the independent power producers that are being paid avoided costs, um, renewable energy power producers, would you be open to renegotiate? Uh, not a single one for the reasons that uh, Mr. Kalinkini talks about is they have investors. For the reasons that investors have made investment based on a certain set of conditions, uh, they're reluctant to change those set of conditions. State lawmakers passed laws enabling the industry to fast track geothermal development. And, and a governor, thank God, who's supportive, you know, is willing to fast track, you know, these kinds of projects. IDG secured wide-ranging support and investment, including a $600,000 advance on a $1.25 million investment from the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. We have sat by for years while foreign companies from Israel and the HECO monopoly have developed it. On the big island, we pay 43 cents. Last year, two homes belonging to Hawaiian families with children burnt down because HECO turned off the electricity when they couldn't pay for it. Are we going to continue to see this, or are we going to continue to exercise our trust obligations to participate in the meaningful development of our resources for revenues? And a $10 million investment from a New Zealand subsidiary company, Eastland Hawaii, Inc.
Meanwhile, the Puna community spoke out. Uh, we've been around uh, against geothermal ever since it was proposed on the Big Island. And we still feel the same thing. They have never asked, answered the questions or the concerns of what the impacts were. All the way to the whole, to me, the most important for Hawaiian is how it's sacrilegious toward our beliefs and how government can allow to alter the theologies of religion. I'm a veteran, I fought for all religions, and I expect mine to be treated the same with some respect, or at least do a study to show that geothermal is not an impact in the theology of beliefs. Until they do that, I'm against it. And I'm against all the polluting as it does, uh, the whole idea of dumping it in one area and then in the neighborhood of Hawaiian people and people there with their so-called way of life. It'll deplete their whole land values and everything so people can enjoy a martini in Kona. I don't think that's right. So you should stop this whole thing and look at other alternatives. There's so many other alternatives. And I think conservation should be number one alternative. Turn off your light if you're not using it. Learn how to live and use less, not more. In order to address the concerns, a study group was convened at the request of Mayor Billy Kanoi, producing a geothermal public health assessment, which recommended the county undertake a comprehensive health effects study. It's really important that we conduct these discussions with civility because there's often a lot of outrage and a lot of anger and there's lots of, and I, I'm fully aware of the larger political context those aren't our issues. Our issues are really focused on the health. What do we know? What don't we know? What do we need to know? What do we recommend and how it might be found out? On August 17th, a large group gathered in Pahoa to protest the proposed expansion of the geothermal industry in Puna. There's powers greater than Helco that, are, that want to transform this area into an industrialized park area. And we live here. They don't. They live in New Zealand or in Nevada or in Honolulu, right? They don't live here. You know, it's really easy to point on a map and say, let's do that here. Not thinking that the pe their people live there. And we live here and we're going to show them. Well, then it's time for us to believe who we are. The shamans, the healers, whatever your call is, actualize and realize. We've come here to balance these violent times. Warriors of peace, ambassadors of love. Always staying present when push comes to shove. Third eye wide open and dancing to music. Respecting our power and knowing how to use it. We come together, we circle the globe. We're seeing our oneness, our chakras are glowing. Led by the Puna Pono Alliance Community Organization, demonstrators marched from Pahoa to Hilo over the course of three days, camping out at night. Now to help and protect our eventually arriving at the Helco headquarters, where they demanded to meet with President J. Ignacio. Jay's accepting our I got your petition and I, I met with Bob and, and Mrs. Sparks and uh, we got some good information. We got better insight as to your concerns. Uh, we're going to work with, uh, continue to work with your alliance uh, to see if we can come to a, a good resolution. So, uh, thank you. Mahalo for listening to us. This represents the food that we grow in Puna. It's organic, it's good, and it's homegrown. And with geothermal plants now being able to go into farmland, we're not going to be able to grow the same good food. And this is from people of Puna to you. It's not Helco against Puna. It's just people trying to save their home in the sustainable place that we're growing. So thank you for listening. Thank you.
I, I guess it was really nice to, of Jay to, to meet with us, and we did have an interesting conversation. Uh, it doesn't sound like he's going to withdraw the contract, but we asked him to consider a moratorium, and I think he is going to think about that, and we're going to talk about that some more. So uh, hopefully we can get at least a moratorium on the RFP until the health study is uh, completed. I, I think he was uh, not expecting uh, that many petition signatures or this many people out front, yeah. Were you expecting this many people out here? Uh, I was, and I was hoping for even more. I think as, as we go on, we'll probably get more. Uh, he, was, he really liked the map. He accepted the map. He asked a lot of questions about where do we live on the map and a lot of questions about, you know, how did the map come to be and, you know, how did, where did all the pins come from and that kind of stuff. He, he seemed to indicate that our locations for the proposed developments were correct. He, he seemed to, he said something to the effect that our information was very good and uh, he couldn't talk about it, but that, that, that looked like we knew what we were doing. We went out for a request for proposals mm -hmm. from geothermal developers. Right. Prior to getting our integrated resource plan approved by the Public Utilities Commission. Okay. That, that's one of their concerns. And Is that a valid concern? What I explained to them is that uh, it's a continuum process this integrated resource planning. We already have an approved integrated resource plan and we're in the process of... From the PUC. From the PUC. And we're in the process of moving to the next uh, iteration of that plan for the next uh, increment. So the existing plan already has uh, components that, that says we were planning to expand geothermal. So the, the request for proposal is actually consistent with the existing plan. We're f we filed in June of this year, um, a proposed new integrated resource plan. And it also has a component of geothermal in there, but it's not approved yet by the Public Utilities Commission. Additional 50 at this point? Up to an additional 50. Up to an additional point. 50. Yeah. Um, by up to, what do you mean? What, what would be the range? We're still evaluating what, uh, what makes sense with respect to additional geothermal en energy. We went out with the request for proposals. We've got some proposals and we're doing the evaluation. We haven't made the determination that we're going to commit to 50 more megawatts of geothermal or whether it's going to be 25. We have not, we have not uh, decided upon that yet. We're still evaluating. In December 2013, Helco's RFP process had stalled. Puna Pono Alliance saw it as a victory. I mean, I'm, I guess I'm trying to get at what are really the, what, when are we looking at a second geothermal project in the state, realistically? The um, geothermal um, could be done either on the west side of the Big Island or in the Ulu Palakua region of Maui. Those are the two most likely targets. Um, companies looking into those sites don't want to publish their data because they've spent a lot of money doing research and they don't want to just give that research free to somebody else to tap the same resource. Mm -hmm. But those are the two most likely sources. And the way of digging down to those may be the same or may be different than what is done in Pune. And because I understood like that the utility put out an RFP for geothermal a while back and they didn't get any responses. They got so. a number of responses, but the PUC, the Public Utilities Commissions, noted that um, that the Big Island has already way exceeded its renewable portfolio standard requirement. And therefore, it only makes sense under current law to add more renewables if they can beat the existing price. And Helco came to the conclusion that none of the bidders met the criteria that they could actually lower rates. After that, things were quiet for more than a year, when suddenly, at the start of the new year, Drilling for six days. Puna Geothermal days. Venture announced their plans to drill a new production well. We have permits to drill up to 28 wells, okay? And we can go up to 60 megawatts. And so we're here for the long haul, and we want to work with you guys. If we're going to be here for the long haul, we want to work together. So, so Mike, how come the Mike Kalei Kini, who today is ORMAT's Director of Hawaiian Affairs, informed residents of the tentative drilling schedule during this community meeting in Pahoa. That's not, this, this project we're doing is not the first time we're doing it to keep up with our contract. 
The reason why we drilled wells in the past, similar activities occurred where our production had declined. So in this case, even though the hurricane contributed to the well getting cooled, etc., it was historically getting cool over time anyhow. So that well was one of the first wells from 1993. So that means it's not a renewable resource. Why, what, what's you what's your definition of renewable? You don't, have to keep, you don't have to keep drilling wells. Well, well, listen, the resource, we're going back to it, so the resource is renewable. That particular well, for whatever reason, you can say the well is not renewable, but the resource is, because we're going back to the resource. Then, ORMAT announced it was selling equity interest in various geothermal power plants, including Puna Geothermal Venture, to North Leaf Capital Partners. The deal will raise $175 million for ORMAT. And last month, Eastland pulled the plug on its investment in IDG, one of ORMAT's competitors in the bid process. In a statement, Hilco President Jay Ignacio stated, quote, ORMAT was selected based on numerous criteria, including attractive pricing, technical design and capability, financial soundness, as well as a commitment to resolving all environmental issues and to working with our Hawaii island communities, end quote. Helco had hoped to find a company willing to tap a geothermal resource in West Hawaii, where the power demand is greatest. That is one reason why the decision to go with ORMAT involves 25 megawatts instead of the entire 50 megawatts as originally requested.